She held my hand and then we ran to my lifespan Understand we had no plan to look to Who's the man? Where's the man? Who's the man? Made to stand, stretch my glands like The powder is my clan I hide the man, we swim in the sand and drinking the crime Waters tasting blind, feeling brand new Fathers forming bands, clasping hands No borders crossing lines Try to skip, bite a whip For the culture you're watching episode seven and today my very special guest is none other than triple threat jabari brown <laughs> although i feel like it's even more than three dancing singing acting rapping he's everything how are you today <laughs> Um, what did you were saying next? <laughs> Are you alright, man? What's good, up? good. I am good as well. It's a pleasure to finally meet you in person. Been following the works for a while. Thank you. I have to ask though, do you have a favorite of all the things you're so good at? Ooh. <laughs> I'll probably say singing. Yeah. Singing is probably because it's just something that you could do without kind of like prepping. Yeah. It's just something you could do with the show. Well, for singers. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone, you can sing anywhere. <laughs> Singers always say that everybody can sing, and I'm like, y'all can sing. <laughs> but they can. Though. I believe they can. You believe they can? They probably just you don't must think so them. when you're from the famous Leacock family. Like y'all are a household <laughs> name in Barbados. I, I can't imagine. Is there like a single one of you who can't sing? And how does that person even feel? I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I don't think there is. So if he looks in any way familiar, this is my favorite orange hair songbirds, little brother, Nikita Brown's brother, Jabari Brown. But we're talking about him today. We're keeping in focus. We're keeping in focus. If you had to pick one for the rest of your life to do, yeah. out of the, the arts that you perform and you love, which one would you pick? I would probably say, I'd probably say acting. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Because, I don't know, something about it, it kind of, it has like a, a, a continuity about it, right? Yeah. Where you are on screen yeah. and it has like a lot, it has like a lot of benefits. Yeah. So you, 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 as an actor, you probably, if, if you want to look at the fame side of it, yeah. you know, people get to look up to you. Yeah. People get to want to be like you. Yeah. You know, it, acting always kind of challenges you to push mm. beyond you know? Yeah. With I feel with the others, there is that element as well. Mm -hmm. But for me in acting, there's always something new to to learn, and there's always more to add to the yes. craft of acting. So that's what I would say, because wow. it's ever learning. Yeah. When did you fall in love with performing arts? When did you know this was it for you? Um. So when I graduated secondary school right mm -hmm. i had a gap here because i didn't know necessarily what i wanted to do yeah um i was going through that stage where i just doing cxc's yeah you're still trying to be cool but you know, <laughs> you know, you know everybody going to be cc and things so. yeah but i i didn't know what i wanted to do mm -hmm. and a cousin of mine he um told me that he was going to do this audition for some place named operation triple track yeah and i remember he was staying with me that weekend yeah so I was like, oh, my God. Um, he was like, no, I can't do it with me, man. I was like, me, come and do it with you, man. I know. I, and so you want me to just do a monologue and, and a song? And I didn't know what monologue is. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, man, all right. And, and we went. And the audition process, I, I, I do some poem and sing some song that I don't like at the time. <laughs> and... I kind of got in, yeah. thankfully, but it wasn't something that I was pursuing. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, it was this thing. But I remember the first rehearsal, we were working on a musical called 13. That was 2014 or something like that, mm -hmm. right? And in 13, we had to rehearse every week. And it was like my first taste of long rehearsals of just doing over the same action. Yeah. In musical, right? And for some reason... Because I've been involved in other rehearsals, kind of, but for yeah. some reason, I wanted to keep coming back yeah. and doing this thing. Like, I got daddy got OTT, got the back, the OTT, yeah. got this part of the show. And yeah. you know, so it was something that was driving in me that was developing. Yeah. And I think from there, I kind of never really got back. It was wow. always like, 
on stage, you know. Yeah. It kind of used to look at it as f- as as fun at the time too, just yeah. doing over the same thing, action on stage, and singing in a group. Perfect. And I was just an ensemble member at the time too. Yeah. So it wasn't like I was this lead, and I was like. You always like being the lead. It was like we was all singing together and, yeah. and doing some foolish stuff. You know? <laughs> so I think that was the first time I really tasted. Yeah. When did you discover your voice as a rapper? It's <laughs> <laughs> a funny story. Um, secondary school actually. Uh huh. Um, back in the days with Crab Soldier. Mm, uh, crab Carlson. Soldier again. <laughs> <laughs> I I I remember I was with this group. Um. I don't know if a lot of people might know them or not, but we used to call ourselves the S and family. We used to sing salt nuts. <laughs> but I remember back then in secondary school, um, like we would always like come up with stupidness in the corridors and write stupidness. And, yeah. And, you know, I never thought of performing them, but I, I remember at points we used to just wrap it in the, in the corridors and people used to come and sing. Yeah. And then next you know we perform it at dress day. Yeah. And as performing at Springer and all kinds yeah. of different schools. Could, could you give me a freestyle right now? You feel like you got something in you. I can't do a freestyle. Like <laughs> that. But for for back then we used to sing um we used to sing salt nuts. Salt nuts. Got enough salt, got enough nuts. I would like to buy a pack for one fifty because it tastes really nice and they're real, real sweet. I would like to buy a pack for me and my friend. If you taste this thing, it will make you hate Spain. That's <laughs> good then. Land by Gwen, a pack of salt nuts and a piece of chicken. And these were things that were very referencing to the school that I was yeah, at, right? experience. So people was like, yo, these are very hard. <laughs> So I think from then I always used to kind of like, and I used to listen to all hip hop music. Too. Yeah. So I think from then I used to kind of just keep writing, and it was I had a real obsession with doing it in the Asian accent. Yeah, which is my favorite part. Yeah. yeah. So Who was, are some of your influences in your mind as as a musician specifically? Who are some of the people influencing you? Well, when it comes to rap. For sure, artists like Kendrick, mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar, and J Cole for sure mm-hmm. top two. Um, and then when it comes to musicians, mm-hmm. um, I always look at people like that that fuse genres. So mm. like um, Anderson Pack in a kind of way, he has a mm. way of rapping and singing. Yeah. Um, to some extent, I would say Bruno Mars to some extent, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the type of person, especially since being exposed to art, listening to all kinds of music. Mm. It can be classical. Can be Afro. So you're eclectic in that way. Yeah, I don't necessarily have a favorite. I listen yeah. to rap a lot because it's something that I do. Yeah. But and I, I, I just need to hear a melody and mm-hmm. I go on from there. Yeah. Actually, I was telling somebody the idea that my major influence in music from the time I was a small age, small age was um, a <laughs> young age. We got young it. age was um, playing FIFA. Playing FIFA the game? Video game at halftime oh. or during the game menus. Yeah. We always play these indie. Well, we call it indie music now, mm-hmm. but back then it used to be music from Europe, music from Ireland, music from Africa, all kind of different music that used yeah. to put in FIFA. Okay. And that kind of, I used to download these songs like a school and listen to them just yeah. because you listen to them all the time. I think that really influenced my way of thinking when it comes to music. Yeah. And you put out an album as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Lack of preparation, it was called. So how did you prepare for that? Yeah. Well, honestly, <laughs> I would say that lack of preparation t- took about three years. Dr. Stefan Walker and we all should know. Shout out to him. Yeah. Yes. Love um, him taught me at school. I developed a, a real close relationship with him. Yeah. Um, and we kind of came up with a concept of fusing hip hop mm-hmm. with Caribbean style rhythm and way of speaking, mm. right? So, um, the hip hop um, scene in Barbados is kind of small, but it's growing. Mm-hmm. But it always has a way of kind of like mirroring what they see. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could be argued that is because it's, it's it originated there. Yeah, you know, and and it came from their way of, of of getting over the rhymes, right? Yeah. But um other countries don't necessarily do it like we yeah. do. You know, other countries do hip hop in their way. Yeah, because Tiny Tepper and he's not playing on any kind of American accent. Exactly. <laughs> so and they still do it in, in their in the style, but not yeah. necessarily with the accent, which is yeah. something that I try to do 
not really by myself trying to develop, but mm-hmm. trying to help influence, you know. Mm-hmm. So lack of preparation took like it, it was just a matter of different singles that we I wanted to release. But I had the kind of um mentality that uh perfectionist mentality mm-hmm. where I was like, man, I can release this song. Yeah. And then he would send me and I'm like, Shh, like let me change this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it come to a point where he stopped, he would tell you he stopped sending me songs. <laughs> and, and I was like, man, send me so you can go and listen to any bus. No, 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 because sometimes you say something is just gonna release the content, yeah, and learn from it and grow from of it. Course. Everything can be like perfect, of course. The first time. So, How do you feel about the success of the album? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe there's success, I don't know. But <laughs> what the idea behind the, 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 the thing with the album is that I wanted it to be my origin story, mm. you know what I mean? I wanted people to something that people could look back at. Mm-hmm. So even if it doesn't like do it extremely well. Mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to pull out a project to tell a story Ooh. and then from there build on how I could market yeah. other stuff in the future. But I want people to look back at that and say, but you yeah. ain't you ain't you ain't hear the man for so adorable. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? so when they say I was a fan from when <laughs> I yeah. know all his music. Yeah. I understand the vibes. Because so I know some other artists that have music like that, that have other yeah. albums. Oh, oh, I was like, yeah. I don't know that. I no. like, you know, so I kind of want <laughs> the underground stuff people call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the story of it is more like at the time I was going through a situation where I felt like if I had made some real wrong decisions in mm. the past, you know, if I had just decided to study this or, or, or go to BCC early or yeah. maybe do this, I would have been in a better position to take care of myself with this, you know? Okay. Um, stuff, little heart rates with, little, with girls and mm. things like you know, that. People may not deem important, right? Mm-hmm. But at the time when you're they that sure age, feel you know, monumental. You feel that way. So all that yeah. I kind of write about in the album as well as the um, the 30 old thrashing that, that happened in Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of reference it as a, a way of my breakthrough to kind of similarly yeah. re- mirror that. Yeah. Um, so the album is just about starting over and, and feeling forward almost. Yeah. And without even if you have like a lack of preparation, it doesn't mean that that is the end. Kind yeah. Of thing. I love it. I love it. I must listen now hearing that and see what I get from it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so we talk about you as a, a, a rapper, a singer, an actor. Let's get into dance. Do you have a favorite genre of dance to perform? African. Oh yeah. African. I, I when it comes to being a, a all over track. Yeah. Dance is like at the bottom. <laughs> dance is definitely at the bottom because I am not, a, you know, like a top class dancer. But what yeah. what I can do is if we working on a play, yeah. or working on a musical or a show, yeah. I just I just need to rehearse. Yeah. And, the, and you get it. And that was also nice to OTT because we will always do technique, um, ballet classes, modern, mm-hmm. all these different things. Yeah. Um, but recently I joined Powerhouse Studios mm-hmm. um, and I started an African class. And because of my experience, you know, certain stuff will come quicker than than I would have expected. Yeah. So I was have like this top, top tier dancer, <laughs> but I can do... Some stuff if I have to, yeah. if, I, if I feel it, you know. I need you need to, to get on stage and do it. <laughs> yeah, but um, I had a dancer that told me that I had real good potential. Yeah, I, I saw it. I can't remember what piece it was. I remember it was outdoors, and that was when I realized I was like, wait. You mean you, you mean in the on a, <laughs> at the papa house? <laughs> it was in a park. It was in an open area. Yeah, yeah. And you came out. They were already on, and you came out, and you joined the dance. And I was like, okay, <laughs> go <Come> through. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say being a part of Operation Triple Threat has contributed to your artistry overall? Very much so. Like, yeah. Like honestly, like. Some people even say I give them too much credit, but yeah, literally they literally birthed 
Well, I was a burp because obviously the family we always just sing and thing. Yeah. But then I was trying to be cool. I ain't really <laughs> know me and my family sing about I think. <laughs> but with OTT it gave me a different atmosphere and, and it unlocked something in me that I didn't mm. think they didn't know that I would enjoy doing. You know wow. what I mean? Because and it sh- it showed in the progression because in the first year OTT it was the ensemble, mm-hmm. right? Um, the next year I I found out about auditions, mm-hmm. so I learned pieces and audition and became a lead character which was Scarecrow in the Wiz, yes. right? The next year I auditioned again and became another lead. So it, it was always like a different yeah. uh, big progression. And then in that same year, um I was um we went up to like, New York to audition for Amanda. Uh-huh. And I had got in but you know, financial blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, worked yeah. out by it. I got in and did really well too. Wow. So it obviously kind of really um, help me a lot yes and on that note we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and talk some more with our own double and a piece <laughs> threat because <laughs> he says don't put dancing on the same level yeah. but because of rapping i think we could keep triple yeah, yeah, we yeah, could yeah. keep triple <laughs> with our very own triple threat jabari <laughs> brown you're watching party culture Oral traditions has been lost, but one of the main things that has remained is the use of plants and herbs among Afro-Caribbean people. Herbal medicine is the mother of all medicines. All generations of knowledge that was using these different modalities, these natural ways of living. A cup of heritage tea is like sipping on tradition. You're watching For the Culture. So Jabari, do you find having a famous older sister helps or hurts your career in the arts? Honestly, I never used to look at it as hurt, hurting. Yeah. You know, because the way how I am is that I always used to want my sister to be successful from small. She was the one that, out of the two of us, was real into singing and performing you yeah. know i was just watching from small wondering what are you doing <laughs> good long girl type picture you know? you know that was always my 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 not really role but something that i chose mm-hmm. in the beginning stages right but w- from watching her mm-hmm. it taught me a lot um um up for, like performance wise mm-hmm. and, and, and how she would carry herself and the professionalism and like her her vocal she she has a way of vocal training herself i mean she she i guess she had vocal training before mm-hmm. but the amount of musical knowledge that she got mm. like you know like it's, it's, it's mad. crazy it's mad you know yeah. um it could it could be argued like maybe we're getting a flight no but i could probably hear music a little bit better you know maybe, <laughs> but, you know she could she she definitely sings way better than yeah I am, you know what i mean so we we both are like a a nice little balance yeah um have but, you two ever shared the stage together yeah we a lot yeah a lot um uh, mostly on her her i think one of the first times we did it i was i was in my school pageant <laughs> and i came out with this rap thing mm-hmm. uh, and she came out and sang with her i Aye. think that was one of the first times she did it with me it with it being about me yeah so yeah we, enough times too yeah. much things to turn it around but we, we how does it feel to share a stage with your sibling it's be, it's be so hard to concentrate yeah we just be laughing <laughs> You just be laughing and talking bear jokes. Yeah. Like the intro is be bear jokes. I'm just gonna introduce my brother and then I say something stupid. Okay, all right. So it's, <laughs> but it, it, it's fun, right? It's feel homey, you know. Mm-hmm. You know she's yeah. a big part of my life. Wow. So it, I wouldn't say it hurts me. I, yeah. I I would never say it hurts me. I think it benefits me a lot. Yeah. To be honest, um, I don't I don't mind when people say Nikita's well, brother, because I am proud of what she's done. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's only a matter of me doing it for myself. I don't need. I don't want her to be the the um person dragging me along or or me having to depend on her. Mm-hmm. I just kind of have to do it for myself as well. Yeah. I learn from what she has done. You know? Yeah. 
could we ever lose you to the world stage? And I say lose you roughly because, you know, Rihanna is still very much our Chantel, but you perform here quite a bit. But could you ever consider going overseas and staying overseas? Honestly, definitely. I, yeah. I definitely. It's actually after COVID too, it's something that I am considering. Yeah. As I have, I'm finishing my last year at EBCC, you know, mm -hmm. a week. And I, okay, so let me just give a little story. So I love stories. I, <laughs> so I was supposed to go to uh, Amda in uh -huh. New York City. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, the finances didn't work out. School was really expensive. Yeah. You know, but I did really well in my audition. So it almost felt like it was my destiny, you know? Yeah. But it didn't work out, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't want to say it was depressed, but that would hurt anybody. Of right? course, yeah. So, um... I stayed in Barbados, um, unfortunately. I did Mirror Mirror with NCF. Mm -hmm. um, show me here. And it was it was kind of uh, my intro to cultural, doing more cultural things. Because mm -hmm. with OTTV, get accustomed to doing international stuff. You yeah. Know? Because you're training for a broader mm -hmm. sphere, right? So yeah. my introduction to cultural stuff was through Mirror Mirror. And mm -hmm. then I had yeah, my dad suggested me just going to UE and getting a degree there. Yeah. For now, right? Yeah. And I might say that was one of the best decisions I made in my life. Because I know. you're I, doing the Bachelor of Fine Arts at ABCCI. So let's talk about that experience. Yeah, I, I think that is one of the best decisions because I feel so connected mm. to culture. Mm. Much like I feel like if I am now ready to go somewhere else. Mm. You know what I mean? To leave Barbados because I feel like I have a groundedness in what Caribbean theatre means, mm -hmm. how important Caribbean theatre is, mm -hmm. and, 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 and like just Barbadian culture in mm -hmm. general, you know what I mean? That I don't need to come back and learn it and, and go away, experience American culture and come back and like, let me see what Barbados is. I feel like I have so much of Caribbean culture yeah. in me. And that, I feel rooted and grounded in it. Yeah. So I feel like that is my path. You know, I know I, know I could travel and, yeah. and, and figure it out. I figure yeah. out with that routineness, let you say. Coming from an OTT background then and doing handles Messiah, yeah. how was that experience? So it was is that that's the same thing. It yeah. was a fusion of the two. So yeah. OTT showed me how musical theater and, and performance on stage stage presence. Mm -hmm. And Hano Messiah is directly Stefan said he want Beijing accent. Yeah. He want his culture is mm -hmm. his Caribbean rhythms. It's called Caribbean sandals, Messiah. So it's it's up. Yeah. So so one of the things about that show is that he always tells me that my role in that show is so unique because I have put so much of my background into my the, the character the, the role yeah. of the narrator that I played. Yeah. So I rap. Yeah. I do spoken word. I use the major accent. Yeah. I. Come on stage, but it's not like I go on stage with a podium and just read. And yeah, you know, I put so much of the, the person that replaces me, he yeah. says, providing it progresses. Yeah, you need to have all those tricks in order yeah. to kind of delve into that role because the narrator not only uh wows the audience but he also tells the story, but yeah. he also has a natural Caribbean accent and he yeah. got all the he also can sing a little bit, yeah. So it's all these different little How things. dare you set the bar so high? Annoying <laughs> <laughs> But I remember when I was watching a piece of it on t television, I was saying, Well, this is not just a narrator, he's performing. Yeah. And that was so interesting to me. I mean provided any character could come and take his but his own take on something, yeah. You know? But that is the original thing, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel blessed to have originated that role. Like, it's and such a your uniqueness to the space. Exactly. How do you prepare to hit the stage? What's your rhythm like? What would be in your radar, for example? You you need three bottled waters from Evian. <laughs> like, what's uh, your thing? <laughs> no. We got music coming through. I <laughs> <laughs> um, no well. What it is is that I I think it's just a matter of of listening to music. Yeah. And I personally feel like I always need somebody there yeah. to talk to me. Okay. Just maybe somebody a part of the cast. That's interesting. Somebody that is Do you find a lot of people do that? I think a lot of people isolate. Like, yeah. Are you different in that? I don't mind isolating. Yeah. But and I I don't but I think I prefer 
talking and, and distract not really distracting myself but just you know being in the moment with somebody else there mm-hmm. particularly cast members or yeah. usually for something like usually for lead roles mm-hmm. they're like um another lead that's in the room dressing room with you pop, yeah. maybe you know so y'all get to talking and you end up talking about all these different things and y'all really so something like that keeps me going at the body and then I listen to it that's it <laughs> Jabari, have you ever experienced stage fright and how do you manage that? Stage fright? Yeah. The, what do you mean by stage fright? As in going out on stage and suddenly you are dumbstruck, you can't remember the words, and like fear just grips you and you have to push past it in order to deliver, or are you just that performer that's not in your DNA, no, you were I'm... born for this? <laughs> I mean, honestly, stage fright could mean different things. Yeah. I think I, I kind of over this whole stage fright thing, mm-hmm. but what you constantly get as a performer is that nervous energy. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you, I mean, I, I ain't shame. I say it, it's poop now. <laughs> <laughs> it's poop off right before it goes on stage. Like, it could be, and I don't necessarily mean it, it just means that you're only nervous. <laughs> Hear me trying to be scientific about it. It just makes me nervous. Yeah, I legit. And, and, and uh, usually, we always have a saying in OTT. Yeah. If you win, nervous about it. Yeah. You ain't really, pa- you ain't really, be worried. We say that in public speaking spaces as well. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. you can almost use the anxiety you feel because it's, it's telling you you aren't being complacent. Mm-hmm. You feel something. Yeah. yeah. For You're this performance. Passionate about it, yeah. You're ready to give it. Your everything. So my knowledge of that yeah. kind of helps me, kind of yeah. propels me to it. And honestly, I'm the type of person that if I mess up something, uh-huh. <laughs> I, I literally find a way to get around it in a yeah. split second. Yeah. And I guess that comes with that experience. And that's a good mentality to have. So COVID-19 would have stripped you of the ability to get on stage as often as you would like. Mm-hmm. And I imagine that that's been stressful. How have you been managing mental health and just staying optimistic and positive during this time? Yeah. Um, How has it been? I mean, it, it's one of those things where I was also going to school, mm-hmm. doing school as well. So that has kind of kept me um busy mm-hmm. um but yeah you kind of want to just be performing and, and, and recording music and yeah. doing these different things but what covid did is kind of allowed me to pause and and really think about what my next step is you yeah. know it, it was kind of like a a brutal but it was a a, a a personal pause of mine that allowed me to really think about okay so when covid done we need to get on with it. What we doing? What mm-hmm. we want to do? So, so to plan. To, it, it allowed me to plan and, and learn more about myself, mm-hmm. you know, um, and not necessarily judge myself. So a lot of people mm-hmm. were home learning new new different skills and, and these yeah. different things. And just because that wasn't me and that's not what I wanted to be like, yeah. it doesn't mean that I have something wrong with me. You know no, what I mean? One of the things I learned is that this is a very unique situation for everyone. Mm-hmm. And... Just journal and, and uh, watch how you go through it. Yeah. And when the time is where you will kind of pick up mm-hmm. um, what you need to change. Okay. So it's uh, for my mental, honestly, I just remember the only thing that I try to do is exercise or training to do that is new is exercise. It's exercise. Yeah. Hence the Powerhouse Studios. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so before we wrap, Jabari, I just want before to get we wrap, from you. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Forget I'm talking to a rapper. <laughs> Using TV terms now before we rap on set here. Because <laughs> I chat me rapping today or any day. You said you chat? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> she has all this vocal ability. This is my range right here. Okay. <laughs> I can't sing rap anything (laughs) but i wanted to get from you some advice for an aspiring performing artist who may be watching this show and thinking i would love to do what he's doing i don't feel brave enough i don't feel talented enough you know how the inner saboteur can go what advice would you give to them yeah um i would say two things 
keep me f f writing is f keep writing. You know what I mean? And writing could be like but if you're good at writing poetry or keep just keep doing it. Even if you don't rhyme, even if the sentence don't make sense, keep writing. Yeah. Or keep writing in general, in journaling your experiences. And I would say take every opportunity. Yeah. Because that's something I did. I do real free things in general. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of people have been telling me, so you don't, you don't get paid for that. You can't need experience. But some experience can be really invaluable. Networking. The people that you meet, make good relationships with people. Yeah. And, and and you will see it blossom. You will see, you know, you will never forget this person. You, you uh, People will never forget you. Yeah. And, and say yes in the beginning stages. Yeah. I just saying get take advantage of yeah. that. There's certain things that you got to go through. Don't yeah. be afraid. Just... Say, just, um, what is it, just don't say yes. <laughs> <laughs> say yes and hone your skills. That's what stuck out for me. <laughs> so if you're a good writer, keep writing, learn from others, and say yes to some opportunities, even if there's no cash up front. Yeah, you yeah. never know what you can learn and who you can meet and network. I got it? Yeah, yeah. networking. So that's today at Jabari School of the Arts. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been watching episode seven of the NCF Presents for the Culture. I've been talking to Jabari Brown, and we were so happy that you stuck with us. Stay tuned for more from the NCF. Bye bye. Yeah.